The Hodag, fact, fiction, or fay? If you would like to learn about fairy folklore, delve into modern fairy faith spirituality, and explore fun and fanciful fairy-themed events, please subscribe to Fairy Fortunes for new videos every Friday. Hello, my fair friends, I'm Ruby Ruse, and today's episode of Fairy Fortunes, I am on location in Rhinelander, Wisconsin, to bring you the story of the Hodag. The Hodag is a beast of local folklore legend. There are varying reports on how large this beast is. It can be the size of a small dog or up to seven feet long. It is said to be like a cross between a cat and a dragon, and there are also amphibious features as well. The iconic look is with the horns, of course, on the head, these very long protruding tusks, and it generally is depicted as being green in color. The original hodag that appeared in Rhinelander in 1893 was said to be black or brown in color, but in the 1930s, Rhinelander High School adapted the Hodag as their mascot. The school colors were green and white and still are to this day, and so something had to change, and it wasn't going to be the school's colors, so the Hodag turned green. The Hodag is said to lurk in the woods around Rhinelander, Wisconsin, and the stories seem to originate from the 1890s. The town of Rhinelander has adopted this creature and it has become the mascot of the town. One of the attractions of Rhinelander, Wisconsin is that as you are enjoying their downtown area and their various hiking trails and other amenities, you can walk around and discover multiple Hodag statues surrounding the area. Some folklorists have pointed out that the Hodag closely resembles a creature from Native American mythology referred to as the Mishipishu. The Mishipishu is a water panther, that is the loose translation of that term. And there are very famous pictographs of the Mishipishu beast at Agawa Rock, which is near the Canada border. This fearsome beast is said to be somewhat amphibious. It has four legs and can walk up onto land and does breathe air. It is said to have very long and terrible teeth and the Mishipishu was known as a malevolent spirit. They could create whirlpools and there is some speculation that the whirlpools were used for the beast to travel through. A very common offering to the Mishipishu was tobacco. And the idea behind this is that you would give offerings to this lake monster for safe passage along Lake Superior. Where Rhinelander really became obsessed with the Hodag seems to come from the logging industry in the 1890s. Now you have to appreciate that in that time frame, there wasn't Netflix, we didn't have internet, and things like books might not have readily been available in those logging camps. So one of the main forms of entertainment was for the workers to gather around and to tell stories. And it's interesting to know that the word hodag is logger slang for a grub hoe. There was one logger in particular by the name of Gene Shepard who didn't necessarily make up the hodag, but he took the story to a whole nother level. In 1893, Shepard gathered up a bunch of the other loggers and went on a hodag hunt. The loggers related how they gathered up their weapons and even squirt guns filled with poison and tracked the beast into the forest where it killed two of their hunting dogs. Finally, they cornered the beast and had to blow it up with dynamite, they said. The story garnered Rhinelander a great deal of attention, even featuring the loggers in the papers. 
These stories actually brought a lot of people into the area to see the hodag for themselves. And Shepard, who was pretty wily and crafty, said that he had captured a hodag and had it stored in his barn. The story goes is that when people would come to see the hodag at Shepard's home, he would come out in a beautiful suit and greet them and then he'd say, well, I have to go check on the hodag to see if I can show you him today. And then he would go out to his barn and there would be this terrible ruckus and all of this noise. And then Shepard would come running back to the guests dressed in tatters and he'd just say, oh, he's too aggressive today. I can't possibly take you in to see the hodag. At the county fair where the monster was displayed, Gene Shepard had employed the help of his sons to puppeteer a, a fearsome beast that growled and snarled. And of course, when you went in to see the creature, it was all very dark and shadowy. In this time period, people were documenting all kinds of new wildlife and creatures. And so the Smithsonian came calling to see Gene Shepard's captured hodag. And it was at that time that Shepard had to admit to the Smithsonian representative that the hodag was in fact not real. Now it has been suggested to me that the creature who might actually be responsible for the folklore tales of the fearsome hodag is actually a beast called the Fisher or Fisher Cat, which is not the supernatural being that everybody wants it to be. It is actually a very ferocious member of the weasel family. It has a very long tail, suspiciously like the hodag, and very prominent teeth and is known for its very aggressive behavior. And the Fisher Cat is a well-known specimen here in North America, in Wisconsin and the Great Lakes region. However, it cannot be denied that the Hodag is a prominent feature of the Rhinelander community. This is more than just a folktale here. The Hodag has become undeniably a mascot of this community. And for that reason, I think that the Hodag might actually have taken on a magical quality and has become something a bit like a thought form. A thought form is a magical creation when there is so much belief and thought and investment in a concept or an idea or a thing that it becomes sort of sentient and takes on a life of its own. The Hodag is more than a tale in Rylander. He is a friend and he's very important to the area. It matters not whether it's real or not real. Obviously, he's real. I'm standing right in front of the Hodag right now at the Chamber of Commerce here in Rhinelander, Wisconsin. Most of the Hodag statues that I featured in this video were implemented in 2015 as a part of a fundraiser exercise in the community of Rhinelander. However, the very large statue that's featured outside of the Chamber of Commerce was built much earlier and was the first of the Hodag statues. Now as I was learning more and more about the Hodag and the Mishipishu creature that they believe that the Hodag is connected to, I came to realize that the Hodag bears a striking resemblance to the abominable swamp slob that I personally saw in southern Illinois. because it had a bit of a pig-like snout and it had ear flaps. As it was sauntering across the road, it looked at the car and it looked at us 
and it had a moment on its face where it was like, what should I do? It was not afraid, it was just trying to ascertain what it should do. And it decided very clearly there seemed to be a shrug of its shoulders and it just continued to saunter across the road. It didn't even pick up its pace, it just casually walked across the road. Now, Hodag is supposed to be a creature that walks on four legs. The creature that I saw near the wetlands in Illinois was on two legs. It stood approximately seven feet tall, but it had a very similar visage of the front with these floppy ears, the horns, and the great big tusk protruding out of its mouth. So I think it's possible that the Hodag is much more than a myth. If you like this video, you might also enjoy my American Fae video on Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Lake Monster. And please visit my website for information on where I am traveling to next. And with that, have a magical day.